Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first part of my Python introduction. You need absolutely no prior knowledge to follow along as we will start from the very beginning. Let's take a look at what we will cover in this video. We will install Python, doing some first steps, taking a look at variables and data types in Python, doing some operations and storing multiple values in a variable. In the end, we are actually practicing your knowledge. Before we start, very important, if you have any questions or problems, please drop me a comment, I'm really happy to help. If this was helpful, please like this video and subscribe to this channel, you are helping me a lot with that. Thank you very much in advance. Okay, let's start with installing Python, and that's actually pretty easy. So just open up your browser and type in python.org here. On this side, go to Downloads, and here you will get a suggestion what to install. If this is somehow wrong, for example, if you're a Windows user and getting macOS here, click on View the full list of downloads. On this side, you will get selections like Windows, Linux, and macOS. I'm choosing this one here as I'm a macOS user. So click that, and let's wait until it's downloaded. It's actually not that large file. So if we are clicking that, we just have to follow the installation instructions. So just continue this. I read all of this before, and by the way. Continue, agree, continue, and install it. After some minutes, you will get this confirmation that Python was installed. Okay, we have installed Python, but how can we use it? We need an environment to actually code in Python. And let me show you one thing which you don't necessarily have to understand. We could open up our terminal here and just type in Python 3 here. And you would get the information that you are now in the Python 3 environment, which you are seeing here. So I could actually code in Python right now. So for example, I could give the input print hello world here, the good old hello world, and I would get hello world as an output. So this is working. So I can actually code in Python in my terminal. But this is not the environment we want to use right now because it has many disadvantages. So let's get rid of that and actually use the environment we are interested in. And this is for the moment, IDLE. And IDLE is already installed on your PC. How can that be? IDLE is installed by default when installing Python. That's it. Now let's open up IDLE. So just search for IDLE here and open this. And this is the environment we will work in this tutorial and in the upcoming ones. We are switching to other IDEs, but I think IDLE is the perfect environment for beginners. Okay, let's start with the first steps in Python. What you have to understand is that we are in the shell mode. In this mode, everything is directly executed. And let's take an example. If we are typing in 5 plus 5 here, we are getting the 10 as an output. If we are typing in 10 times 2 here, we are getting the 20 as a direct output. We could also assign values to variables, and that is actually pretty easy in Python. But just type in x equals 2, and let's take the 10 here. Then, if I want to get the value of x, I'm just typing in x here, and I'm getting the 10. So I don't need a so-called print statement here to get an output. Let's take another example, y equals to 15. And if I want to print out y, I'm just typing in y here and getting the 15. I could also do operations with these variables like x plus y, and I would get 25 here, okay? Now let's take a look at the other mode. Click on File, and then New File. And we are getting a completely empty file here. And this is working in another way than this shell here. So if I'm typing in the same syntax as here, 5 plus 5, and try to execute that by pressing Enter, I'm landing nowhere. So I'm just moving through these lines here. So what is happening here? This has to be executed in a whole this whole file here. So everything what is inside this file is being executed. But let's take it simple and just execute this 5 plus 5 and see what happens. How can we execute this file? By clicking on run and then run module. Once we have done that, we have to save this. And this is stored as a PI, py file. So let's just name it first here. And what we are noticing now is that this file is being executed in the shell, right? So we are seeing the information first.py here, but we are getting no output. And this is important to understand. We are getting no output because we have no command for Python to perform this output. So we need the so-called print statement for that. And if I'm printing out this one here, so I type in print here, use parentheses and 
do the running of the module again. So I'm typing in run, run module again, save that file. Now I'm getting the output, okay? So if we're working in this mode, we have to give the command to print out stuff for Python, okay? Let's take another example here. So let's just assign a value to x. Let's take five here. And if I'm executing this by run and then run module, save that, I would get nothing because I didn't perform a print statement. But I could print x directly here because this is being executed. So five is stored to x. So if I'm typing in x here, I would get this five. But I could also use the print statement inside the script. So I'm printing out x here and running this module. I would get the five here, okay? So I think the difference should be clear, right? Okay, let's get to the next important concept, the so-called flow of execution in Python. Let's take an example for that. Let's store five in x. In the next line, we're storing six to x. How can Python know how large is x? Well, let's try to find out by printing out this variable. If we're executing that and saving the file, of course, we are getting a six. Why is that? Because Python works from top to bottom. So that is the flow of execution from top to bottom. So in the first place, we have x equal to five. But in the next line, a new value is stored to x. And that is why x is six. So remember that Python is working from top to bottom. There are exceptions from this rule, but this is not important right now. Let's move on to the next concept. What are the data types in Python? And I have some good news for you. There are only four data types in Python, and they're actually pretty easy to understand. The first one is the integer, and this is just a whole number. So for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on, or even 20 or 30 whole numbers are integers. Let's take five as an example here. And I'm assigning the specific value to a variable which I'm calling as the data type, okay? So the next data type is a floating value or a float. And I'm calling this floating here. And this is just a decimal number. For example, 3.5 or 4.3 or 7.2. Every decimal number is a floating value. The next data type are string values. I'm calling this string value here. And these are just text values. So for example, hello. You have to use quotation marks when assigning string values. Last but not least, there are Boolean values. And these are values which can take two options, true or false. So let's call them Boolean and assign true or false. By the way, Python, what I didn't mention in the beginning, is a case sensitive language, meaning that if you are using small or capital letters, it does make a difference. So these are the data types in Python, nothing more than that. Now let's execute that. Firstly, let's just call them data types here. And of course we're getting no output because we didn't print out anything, but we could type in integer here and we would get the five, right? Or floating and we would get the 3.5 or string value. We would get the hello and Boolean. We would get the true, right? So this should be clear, I think. Now let me show you a very useful function and this is the type function. And this function is returning you the data type of a certain variable. So as an example, if I'm typing in type of integer here, which is the five, I'm getting the information that in this variable integer, there's stored an integer. Or let us take the floating value as an argument of this function. And I'm getting the information that we got a float here. Or let's take the string value and we're getting this string information here. And last but not least, the Boolean value, we're getting the bool information here. So this is pretty useful in the future to get the data type of a certain variable. Okay, now let's do some operations with different data types to see how they interact with each other. Let's start by assigning some variables. Let's start with W. Why W? Because then we have four variables for four data types, W, X, Y, Z. So W is equal to, let's start with an integer, okay? We're taking five here. X is, 
let's say 3.5. So this is a float value. And y is, let's take hello for a string value. And z is true. And this is a Boolean value. Okay. So let's execute this script and see if everything went perfect. So we are printing our w here. We're getting 5. Perfect. x is 3.5. Y is hello and Z is true. Perfect. Let's do some operations with those variables to see how they interact. And we are using the arithmetic operator for this. This sounds complicated, but this is nothing more than plus, minus, times, divided by, and so on. So let's use the plus operator here. Let's start with W plus X. So we are performing an addition with an integer and a float value. And let's see what is happening. We are getting an 8.5, okay? So this is possible. You can add a float value to an integer value. But this is somehow logic, right? And what we are getting is, of course, a float value, right? So if you are adding a float to an integer, the output is a float value. Let's actually use this addition and store it in a new variable to make this clear. So let's use some wx here and we are just assigning w plus x. So you can do an assignment as that, of course. So if we are printing this one out, we are getting 8.5 and we could perform something we already applied. So this is our type function and let's check that some wx here and we are getting the information that we have stored a float value, okay? So this is pretty easy, right? If you are adding up an integer to a float, you are ending with the float value. I've just reset it the shell to keep a better overview here. Let's get to the next operation. That would be an integer plus a string value. So let's perform that. W plus Y. And what we are getting is an error message. And this is telling us that this is not supported in Python. So you can't perform an addition with a string value and an integer and vice versa. This is not possible in Python. Next operation is an integer w plus a Boolean value. And this is actually pretty interesting. So let's do that. And we are getting a 6 here. Why is that? Boolean values, which are true and false, are stored as numbers. A true value is equal to 1 and a false value is equal to 0. So let's actually amend that and change z to false and perform. So actually we have to execute the script of course to assign this value newly. And now let's perform the same operation again. w plus z. And now we're getting a 5 because we're adding 5 plus 0 here because this boolean value is equal to 0. Okay, what's left to be done? We could also check for a float plus a string value. That would be x plus y. And if we are doing that, we are also getting an error message. So you can't perform that in Python. As you can't perform an integer plus a string operation. Last but not least, what's also important is string plus string. So let's just add up y plus y here. So that is hello plus hello. Let's see what is happening. y plus y. And this is also pretty important. You can actually perform plus operations with strings. So you are getting a double hello here. So this is actually working, okay? What's also not working is to perform uh, addition with the string value and a Boolean value. So let's check that, y plus z won't work. Let's get to the last part of this tutorial. And this is storing more than one value to a variable. So for example, I want to store 1, 2, and 3 to x. And this is done by using squared brackets. And with that, you are creating a list in Python. So if we are printing out this, we are getting a list. And we can find out that this is a list actually by applying our just learned type function. And we're getting the information that this is a list. Okay. There is another possibility to store more than one value to a variable. And this is a so-called tuple. How can we do that? So let's use y here. You can store values in a tuple by just listing the values comma separated. So one, two, three here. And if we're printing out that, we're getting a tuple. Of course, you could also use parentheses, but that doesn't make a difference. So this is the same. So if I'm using type function here, 
I'm getting this tuple information. It's your turn now. Take a look at these tasks and try to solve them. The solutions for these tasks are in the video description. Let's take a look at the first one. Define a variable x and assign a boolean value to it, which equals 1. Second one is you have a given x and you should tell what data type is x and how can you check it and if you have expected that data type. And the last one is you should create a tuple out of these variables and a list out of them. And also you should check that you have actually created a tuple or a list. Let's take a look at what is up next. In the next video we will take a look at the input function, typecasting in Python, indexing and slicing, conditional statements such as if, elif and else. We are taking a look at loops, loop for loop and while loop and again we are practicing your knowledge. With that being said I thank you very much for watching. If this was helpful please support this channel by liking, subscribing and commenting and I'm looking forward to see you in the upcoming video. See you next time. Thank you very much again. Bye bye.